Welcome back to Knuckles Knowledge. My name is Rob Knuckles. I'm the PGA Director of Golf here at Golf Club of Indiana. And today, as you can see, we've set up here on the back side of hole number 12 here at Golf Club of Indiana. We've set up for a short game lesson. And today we're going to be working with chipping and pitching, two different parts of the short game, and something that I practice more than any other part of the game. Uh, uh, golf professionals in general practice chipping and pitching more than any other part of the game. I guarantee you that they do because this is where this is where they make their money. When they hit a bad shot or they miss a green, they have to be able to get it up and down uh, so that they can keep their round going, especially in the heat of the battle. Uh, I spend probably 75% of my time practicing these shots around the green. I come out here late in the evening, early in the morning when nobody's around. I find an open hole and I start throwing balls all over the place and I practice these exact shots. Today on Knuckles Knowledge we're going to show you exactly how to practice these shots, exactly how the setup goes and the different clubs that I use around the different aspects of the green so that I can get it up and down just like you need to do. We're going to save shots today right here at Golf Club of Indiana learning how to chip it and how to pitch it. Stick around, we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back, and as you can see here, we've set up for a, uh, a chip shot here on the back side of number 12. And just to kind of go through a, a little bit here, first of all, um, there's a lot of different club choices that you can use uh, for a chip shot. And um, I, I always kind of look at two factors, um, actually maybe three. Number one is being my lie, and in this particular situation, we have a really good lie, obviously. We're just in the fringe, just off the back side of the green. Um, number two would be the distance that I have to go between my ball and where the flag is out on the green. In this particular case, we have a front pin and we're on the back side of the green, so I have a very long distance uh, to go. Uh, and number three is how much terrain is there? Is there a lot of rolling? Is there a lot of undulation on the green? Do I need to fly it to a certain position uh, before it starts rolling? Uh, generally speaking, I'm going to try to make sure that this ball rolls most of the way. Uh, generally, it is more difficult to fly the ball to a position and then let it roll than it is to roll the ball the entire way. Uh, to to kind of quote a, a phrase from the Black Knight, uh, he said that he barely tries to get it on the green and roll before he does anything else. He feels that he has more control over the golf ball by rolling it than he does any other shot in golf, especially around the greens. So if that's the case, then let's make sure we roll the golf ball. So in this particular case, I have a very long way to the pin. I'm going to try to just barely get this ball on the green. So I've chosen an 8-iron for this particular shot. Now why an 8-iron? Because I'm really not trying to fly this ball very far. In a chip shot, we're just trying to chip the ball. We're just trying to get it barely moving. We're just trying to hit a little tiny bump, try to get it flying onto the green just a little ways, carry just a little bit of area, and then roll the rest of the way. The setup is a very important part of this. And as you can see here, I've laid down a, an alignment stick here on the ground in front of me. I use this alignment stick very often when I practice, especially when I'm looking for a direction. Um, I'm going to use the alignment stick to line up my body. And I'm using it to make sure that I align myself about 45 degree angle away from uh, my actual target. I always want to make sure that my club face, my leading edge of my club face, is aimed at the target or at where I want the ball to go. Um, the face of the club, leading edge, always should start at your target. However, my body in this particular situation, I'm going to preset. I'm going to make sure it's always uh, turned in the open position because I'm not taking a full swing. You notice in a golf swing, we actually open our body to a finished position, finishing with our weight on the front left side. In a chip shot, we're going to preset our weight already in that position, already turned, already through the swing. So in this situation, I'm going to make sure that my body is on this 45 degree angle left of my target. And I'm going to put all my weight, about 75% of my weight, onto this left leg. I don't want any weight really at all on my right leg. And the reason is, is because I want to make sure I make a descending blow. I want to make sure that my club doesn't have any opportunity to hit behind the golf ball. I want to make sure I hit in front of the golf ball or at least at the golf ball and beyond, okay? The only way I can assure that I do that is if I lean my weight forward. So I've got myself on the alignment stick 
aimed left of my target. I have my club face, my leading edge, aimed where I want the golf ball to go. All right, straight at the hole or slightly to the right because this does break a little bit to the left. I'm going to lean all my weight on this left shoulder, on this left leg. Now, if you'll notice, the butt of the club is basically at my left hip now. It's basically in line with my left leg. The golf ball is placed a little bit more towards the center of my stance or slightly ahead of that. Um, and that's just to encourage the fact that I get this club out in front. I've got that club there, butt of the club up my left leg, weight out forward. Now all I'm going to do is putt it. Sounds crazy, right? I know, right? We're just going to putt it. From this position, I don't even care what grip you pick. Uh, Ray Floyd actually says, pick the grip that you putt with. Now, I putt cross-handed once in a while. I putt with long finger down on the left side of the, of the shaft. If you think that that's a great way to, to hit this shot, then use your putting grip. I'm actually going to use my putting grip, which is finger down the shaft on the outside, reverse overlap they call that, and I'm going to putt this as I chip it. Make sense? All right, got back in my stance, lean forward, grip down a little bit, choke down, and now I'm just going to putt. Now, as you saw, and you'll see from behind, when I take the camera back here, I just barely moved that ball in the air. It probably went that far in the air. I barely got it on the green and it rolled the rest of the way. Very important that we all we're trying to do is just putt this ball because the ball's got to get rolling. We have way more control over the golf ball if it's rolling versus flying in the air. One more time. Set the club up where you want the ball to go. Now my 45 degree angle with my body. Preset my weight all the way on my left side. Butter the club up toward my left leg. Take my putting grip. Choke down. Now I'm going to putt it. Roll the ball out there at about five or six feet. Perfect idea, perfect shot. That's what we call chipping. Next, we're going to go on to, to uh, pitching the ball. We're going to move back just a little bit into the rough, and we're going to try a little chip shot. Before we do that, let me say this. Never grab a sand wedge here. Just don't do it. It's not really worth the risk. You'll put too much spin on the ball. You'll have to hit the ball too high in the air, or it'll encourage a shot that goes too high in the air. And it's just not worth the risk. Use an 8 iron. Use a 5 iron. Use a 7 iron. Use a 9 iron. At the most, use a 9 iron. I like 8 iron. I like 7 iron. This shot, it's really all you need. Hang on, we'll be right back. Hi, welcome back to Knuckles Knowledge. Now we're going to talk about pitching the ball. Now pitching the ball is a little bit different than chipping the ball and since we've changed the type of shot we're going to hit we've changed our location just a little bit. We're out here on the third green at Golf Club of Indiana. The wind was getting a little bit strong back there on number 12 and here our shots a little bit different. We've got a lot of grass to cover. We've got about 20 feet or so, 15-20 feet of, of rough and some fringe and then we've got a little bit of a downhill green to a short pin that we have to navigate before we get to the flag. Because of that, we can't really hit that low bump and run pitch shot or chipping shot that we just hit uh, previous. So now we have to think about hitting the ball a little bit higher and using trajectory to get the ball onto the green. Because of that, we're going to hit a pitch shot. Now, a pitch shot sounds just like what it sounds like. A pitch sounds like a toss, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And that's exactly where it gets its name from. When I want to think about what a pitch shot looks like, it's exactly like when I toss it underhanded to somebody that's in front of me. So if I were going to toss the ball to somebody, I would toss it underhanded like that. So when I teach this shot to somebody and I say, okay, I want you to face the target and I want you to try to toss the ball out there about where you think you need to throw it underhanded to make it get to the hole. Where do you think you need to throw it to try to make it land and see how far it goes out to the hole? So instinctively, most people toss it like this it lands to a certain point and then it rolls out to the hole. 
Well, that's great. Now, let's try to use a golf club that tosses it in the air just like that, pitches it, and rolls out to the hole. Well, this particular shot, I've chosen a 60 degree wedge because we need to hit this just a little bit higher to get it to land fairly short, just on the edge of the green, and roll out to the hole. So, in this particular club, allows me to do that. We need to get a setup that matches the type of shot we're looking for. So the setup is similar to what we did in the chip shot. Not quite the same, but pretty similar. A little bit open and fairly narrow with our stance. Um, not quite as dramatic to the left as we did with the chip shot, but fairly open, just a little bit. We are going to set the club down on the ground with a square club face. Sometimes you can open the face if you'd like to, um, depending on how much loft that you need. I really don't think this particular shot needs that much loft, so I'm going to leave the club face square. But the difference here is I'm not going to lean my weight forward like I did on the chip shot. I'm going to leave my weight centered in my body. So the butt of the club is going to go up the center line of my body. The ball is placed in the center of my stance as well. And all I'm trying to do here is let the club slide underneath the golf ball. I want the club to go through the grass, and I want to allow the golf ball to slide right up the face of the club. We're going to let the entire loft of this club dictate the loft of the ball as it goes off my face. So I'm going to make sure that I put everything in the center of my body. The butt of the club go right up my button line of my, fa of my uh, body, so it's in the center. And the stroke is making sure that my back of my left hand which is exactly the, the same position as the face of my club. If you'll notice, they're in the same position, right? I want to make sure that that never changes through the shot. As I take the stroke and I go back and I go through, the back of my left hand and the face of the club stay in exactly the same position. If I break that wrist and the face goes to the left and they are not facing my target at the end of the shot, the ball is probably going to go left. It's also going to hit with top spin and it's gonna take off running. We don't want that. We want the ball to go up and land, just like we tossed it with our right hand, right? When I let go of a good toss, my hand doesn't go like that. My hand goes like this. We want the back of the left hand and the face of the club to go towards my target. So, I'm gonna set up slightly open, club face square, butt of the club straight up the center line of my body. I'm gonna choke down just a little bit to have more control over the club head. Then, I'm going to Toss the ball with my left hand, keeping the back of my hand in the face square to my target. And toss. Just like that. Ball barely goes up in the air. It lands on the green and runs out once it hits the green. I wish you could see that shot. It's like a foot and a half. It's really gorgeous. All right. One more time. Let's take a look at that. All right, club goes down behind the golf ball. Again, leading edge is very important. We always want the leading edge to be aimed at where we want the ball to go. The leading edge dictates where the ball goes every single time, right? Leading edge goes towards the hole, ball in the middle of my stance, slightly left of my target. Butt of the club, sub center line of my body, choke down just a little bit. Back of the left hand matches the face of the club, straight to the target, back, through. Just like that. Notice the back of the left hand in the face. Square at my target. Just like that. I have about a foot past the hole. Not too bad. I'll take that shot every time. Remember, the pitch shot and the chipping shot are very identical from a setup standpoint, except for two major differences. Two major differences. Okay? We're still open. Weight forward on the chip shot. Weight centered on the pitch shot. The difference is what makes for the ball flight. If I lean my weight forward, it makes the ball go low. If I put my ball center and I put my weight centered, it helps the ball get up in the air. Now, can I use different clubs for the shot? Absolutely. I've used everything from a 54 degree wedge all the way down to, believe it or not, a three wood. I know it's crazy, right? Three woods? Are you serious? Yeah, three wood. But a half. Um, a 54 degree wedge will fly up a little bit lower and it'll run out a little bit longer. Same thing with a nine iron. A pitching wedge will do the same thing. It'll fly a little bit lower, run out a little bit longer. If my pin were clear on the back side of the screen and I'm in this position, I had a lot of grass to carry, I would probably go to a pitching wedge or nine iron, even an eight iron in this situation. I would still do a pitch shot, 
I would still want to use more loft of the club, try to get the ball higher in the air because I need to carry all of this ground. But I'm trying to land the ball directly on the first part of the green that I can land it on and make it run as far as I need to run. Make sense? I hope it does. Hopefully this lesson is great for you and you learned a little bit today about how to chip the ball and how to pitch the ball. If you need help with your game, just see the guys over at the Golf Performance Academy here at Golf Club of Indiana, or you can come see me as well. My name is Rob Knuckles. I'm the PGA Director of Golf right here at Golf Club of Indiana. I really appreciate you paying attention today. If you like what you see, give it a big old thumbs up. Subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel, and make sure you watch us right here at Golf Club of Indiana on our newsletter each and every week. Thanks a lot for paying attention. We'll see you next time.